One day I was scrolling through the messages on my Discord server and suddenly one of my viewers Shogs posted this message with a link to one of his newest maps. Been working on this for way too long, if someone wants, I'd greatly appreciate some feedback, mainly for the route. I was bored and I had nothing better to do so I decided to download it and try it out. My first impression was that it looks like a really solid grass dirt mixed map with some nice scenery. The map starts off with a sausage turn with a transition to some grass, followed by a gear into a dirt section and then into some grass again. The map then continues alternating between grass and dirt like this for the rest of the map, until the end where there is a jump to the risky finish. After only a couple of minutes of playing it, I really liked what I was driving on. It was unique and I was impressed. But there are some things that I would have done differently, which I think would have made the map even better. Note that these things are purely subjective and none of the things that I note in the video are factual. They're just some small things that I thought about when playing the map for the first time. And of course I asked the author of the map if it was okay if I made this video. So let us start off with the route. The beginning of the map is really creative and unique. I love the sausage start and the calculated transition into the grass. However, a mistake that I did when driving it for the first time was that I was taking the inside line of the poles. Now it didn't take me more than one or two runs before I realized that the intended way was to go for an outside line, but this can have been a bit clearer. I'm pretty sure a beginner player would not have found the intended line as fast as I did if it was not just for a lucky coincidence. So if there was something that I would change, then it is the guiding details of the sausage. How I would do this is by either changing the pole placement around a little bit or adding some sort of guiding scenery. An example of a map that has some good looking guiding scenery is Flatliner 7 by Slays, where he placed some trees, bushes and other items onto the road. I think that this kind of detailing would have looked good on this track, and I also think that it would have fixed the original problem that I stumbled upon. The next thing I noticed is also kind of related to poles again. When you leave the sausage and drop into the grass landing, you must land between these two poles. This might seem like I am nitpicking at this point, and I definitely am, but hear me out. The fastest line is to drive between these poles, right? So you are already getting punished for landing anywhere else on this block. But on top of this you are now going to get a complete stop if you jump a bit askew. And this is something that is not very uncommon in this part of the map, because the poles are barely visible from the road even in cam 1, the camera with the highest top down visibility. I even tested this statement with some friends, in their first playthrough of the map, most of them crashed into these poles. In my other video, 5 steps to improve your Trackmania maps, I talked a bit about adding details to the route. Now why is this suddenly bad? Well, in this scenario you must aim your car precisely and when you take off into the air there is no way to change your horizontal line. On top of this, the landing is on a grass surface and grass is very slippery, so even if you take off barely to the side there might not be a chance for you to correct your line in time, resulting in a crash. So how do we fix this? Well, the boring and bad solution would be to remove the poles, so why is this bad may you ask? Because we like details like this. A better solution would be to add small signs on top of them, and another solution would be to somehow move the poles so that you have time to correct your line after the landing. Moving further into the map, about one block to be exact, there is a cross. This cross is persistent throughout the whole map, in every grass part, so there is a clear theme going on here. These crosses consist of this pool block and a square metal support bar which are block mixed into each other. Driving on this metal surface is faster than driving on grass, so it would make sense to maximize the time you spend on these edges, right? Well, yes, but actually no. It turns out that these edges are just visuals. What you're driving on is actually penalty grass. So in this map, you will want to avoid these at all costs. Now, I don't know if this is intended or not, and I don't think it's necessarily bad, but it's something that I noticed when my car was slowing down rather than gaining speed. Something that I would also change is this grass part, where you have a little bit too much speed, so you have to do a release tap. Other than these things, there is really nothing that I can note out that I would have done differently. The route is fun to drive, and there are no annoying gears, there are some interesting turn combinations, and the grass-dirt mixed theme works really well. Leaving the route and moving on to the scenery, 
the grass parts are surrounded by some scenery towers, signs, hill blocks, poles, trees and these water block crosses. And the dirt parts have these support pipes instead of towers, red arrows and some well placed fake routes. I like that there is a consistent theme throughout the whole map, and being a fan of simplistic scenery I really like the looks of it. Even though there were some moments where the scenery looked a bit empty, mostly when you're facing the outside of the map where no scenery is seen. A solution to this would be to add some scenery towers that are not connected to the route, but can be seen from the field of view and playing. Something else that I would have done to spice it up a bit is adding more detail to it. An example of such detail would be mixing some other color into the map. This could be done by putting a layer of plastic wall ride blocks in different colors with these new convenient corners that were added into the Royal update. The wall ride detail is something that I saw Simo and Kisla doing in their map Riding Waves, and I thought it looked really good. Another example of detail is adding these new signs and overhead lights that you can apply to roadblocks. These three things, the wall rides, signs and lights, shouldn't take too long to distribute along the map. And I think it would have created some nice contrast to the all black color theme that is going on here. If I would want to go further into detailing, I would also add some moving blocks to make the map feel more alive. Some of you might have already guessed that this kind of map review video is not only for the author of this map. I hope that some of the things that I said in this video will give you an insight into my perspective when trying out a new map. And I hope that you learned a thing or two that you can apply to your own creations. If you like these kind of videos and want to see more of them, then you know what to do. And if you have any feedback or other things that you would want to see from me, then don't hesitate to leave a comment. If you would like to share your own maps or creations, then you should definitely check out my Discord server. I would like to welcome all the new people that have joined in the past few days. The Discord server is now more active than ever, and it's always fun to see new names pop up. And if you want to buy me a coffee, you can do so by following the link to my Patreon in the description. And here is a bonus for you few people who stayed until the end of the video. Enjoy this magically flying finish, and see you next time.